Jackson. I'm a river guy. I work for Bench Rock Post. Bench Rock Post in High Springs. And uh, as part of my job, I guide river tours all over North Florida mainly. Uh, we've got 60 rivers. It's so really bad. Not too pleasant. <laughs> it's my, it's my floor. Yes, you speak right in the microphone if you hear it. Okay. 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 So, um, but yeah, we lead about 60 river tours all over North Florida. And uh, for preparation for this, I counted about 43 of those are fed by springs. So it's a, it's a real privilege kind of job. It's one of those job descriptions that you feel like you're bragging every time you just tell people what you do for a living. I guess that's a good thing. Um, but as I was sitting here listening to the other speakers, uh, sort of like, like Chris, and uh, taking a lot of notes and uh, people were saying things that you wanted to say, but I was also compiling a lot of ideas and things that came up that people were bringing up. So I had a whole different list of things I was going to say that I walked in here with this morning. Um, but uh, in general, the main reason I was asked to come in here is to talk about the rivers. So I'm not really associated with any entity or company that could do anything about the springs. I'm basically representing paddlers and speaking for paddlers, sort of. So in a way, I speak for a lot of us out here. Um, but uh, I wanted to sort of explain to you or, or uh, tell you a little bit about what I'm seeing on some of these rivers. Uh, Bob asked me to um, bring some notes about what we're seeing on some of the rivers and just what might be, how they might be impacting recreation and good tourism. Um, for most of these, so far, as we can tell, there's not, there hasn't been big impacts on, on ecotourism as far as paddlers and uh, tours and people visit, visiting parks. Uh, except in those extreme cases, like Mark was talking about earlier. Um, we're seeing impacts, though, on all these rivers. Every river I do, just about, we're seeing really bad impacts. And uh, it, it really is heartbreaking. To, um, some of them way worse than others, especially the ones that are most influenced by springs, we're seeing a lot more impact. And um, it's, really, it's really hard to watch, and it's happening really fast. Uh, so, and I know we have sort of limited time, but I had a whole list of rivers I was going to just tell you about what I'm seeing, so I need to really sort of edit myself. But um, one area we really see very dramatic things happening is Rosello. Uh, somebody mentioned that earlier, which is the Sun Coast Keys area, basically the mouth of um, Home South and then Crystal River, south down towards Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. The whole area receives a lot of spring water. And, uh, it's showing very much the, the lack of spring flow going out there. There's huge swaths, of, as far as the eye can see, of dead trees, palms, and everything. All species, which shows that it's not some kind of pathogen, it's, it's uh, environmental. So it's uh, very apparent there. I'd really recommend anybody that uh, wants to see these things, especially if somebody that doesn't have uh, any doubters in your family or friends, you should take one and drive out to Ozello and have a look out there. It's, it's pretty awful to see. Um, Salem River, uh, we can really see impacts, obviously, we're seeing all the vegetation and what really struck me last year, and it's, it's shocking how much has really just come up in the past few years. Some of these signs and things we're seeing are really just uh, uh, accelerating that fast. But when they had the, the meeting last year at Silver River, if you remember, there was a flood right about that time, just before that. And as we're preparing to get down there, I checked the graphs real quick just to see if the water's been flooding in out of the banks. So the graph didn't even, at the height of that flood, didn't even get to the median flow of the normal flow up to like 10 years before that. So it's just it's pretty telling right there. And we see that in normal flow, so where it's very obvious as well. It's in exotic animals. And then, then you have that added issue there with the reservoir down below, so we don't know. As far as the species, you have the whole issue of what's migrating up there, what's not, uh, what's being affected by the algae in the spring. You know, so leave that to the researchers and parcel that out and see what the, what's impacted what. Um, San Fe River, I might as well just get right to my home river. Well, one thing, one river that, uh, one spring run that's kind of telling you is Blue Spring, Volusia Blue Spring. Over there, there was a study, well, there was a study of four main springs done about 10 years ago by um, uh, Dr. Mark Vaughn and Frederick Bell. And they studied ecotourism in a lot of the, the, these four main springs, Ichitabi, Homosassa, Wakala, and uh, Volusia Blue. Very interesting study, I recommend reading it. But, um, 
one of the really interesting and scary findings was that a blue spring visitation dropped noticeably like 6%. It was a 10 year study, I think, from 92 to 02, something like that. Um, but visitation dropped while the population area went up and uh, tourism in general in that area went up. But, they, um, but the visitation to that part in particular went down. And they, they were reluctant, they didn't really come out and say this, but they, they say it was strongly suspected that that's because of the decline in health of that spring, which uh, ended up just apparent there too, the nitrates and such. But anyway, on Santa Fe River, our home river, that's where my business is, high springs, we also had some very dramatic wake up calls in the recent couple of years, few years. Um, just, we've had some low periods over the past 10 years, but nothing like what we had last year with the post spring going dry, basically. Um, and had some flooding rains, really high waters after that, and immediately the water levels went back down again. So it's, it just shows it was really all just uh, rain runoff that was feeding at that point. So in the old days, not that old, not that long ago, you get a low water event with droughts, not much rainwater. And the river just get very clear, turns into a big spring run, all the way up to the river rise. The river rise just is a big spring. Um, but that just doesn't seem to happen now. It's, it's, um, when the water gets, gets that low, it's just the river gets dry. Basically, Santa Fe above post spring during that drought became a series of sta uh, stationary pools. It wasn't flowing at all. Um, and that's when we had that big algae bloom. Standing still water got hot and quickly bloomed. Um, so it uh, impacted their park, it impacted everybody on the river, it impacted our business. Um, we started to have to launch further down by post spring and on down from there. But, um, so with trends going the way they are with the research that's coming out, it's really great research that's been coming out the past 10 years, especially with Dr. Knight and such. Um, and these are really dramatic uh, episodes. I think it's really becoming very apparent how, how uh, urgent this situation is. Um, <coughs> there was a couple of things just that were mentioned uh, before I get pulled up. I'm just going to get into the things I want to uh, mention. But um, as far as how to address one of the ways that, that an idea of a way to address this, I think is it's really a combination of a couple of ideas was to um, really emphasize the fact that these springs are not just the issue that it involves the, the aquifer also. You know, that's a, a great point. And also that it continues from the spring into the river, like Mark was saying. So I think the more we can make people aware that it's this whole system that goes far beyond even the river basin um, and it includes all the communities nearby, the more you can really get that message out to people. Um, that's a hard sell. It's just too hard to make that connection from that spring and watershed to their to their uh, home. Um, and what, one idea that kind of just came to me as I was saying there, I think about sometimes in the future having these great meetings in the town, in, you know, in, in Gainesville, right at the heart of town, and give people a sense that this is an issue here, you know, rather than out here. It's a beautiful spot out here. I'm happy. Matter, but you know, see a lot of the same faces, kind of a lot of new faces too, but a lot of the same people. I think if we sort of made this, put this in the heart of Gainesville and made this sort of a Gainesville issue and give people a sense of immediacy that what we're dealing with is a Gainesville problem and not, you know, something that's happening on the Swanee River Basin or in Chittutney or whatever, um, I think that might go a ways towards sort of giving people a sense of uh, that's really their problem, their issue. Um, anyway, that's just an idea. I'm done. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Christine Smith with the MR Environmental. Lars, thanks for your talk. Um, and this might be directed at, at any of the previous panelists, but I was curious to know if any 